Well hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to um, just share a little bit, I mean you can't be on this channel for very long before you find out that I put quite a bit about Christianity on here and and the different things that uh, I believe and shape my belief and various sermons and things that I've heard and recorded and some of my own even. So um, mostly I talk a lot about photography but as I mentioned in my introduction to this YouTube channel, I believe we are all three-dimensional people and we need to uh, uh, consider all those three dimensions, the body, the soul and the spirit. So today is one of those spirit dimensions that I'm considering today. And um, I just thought I'd share a little bit about uh, my background in becoming a Christian. I was, I was 28 when I became a Christian and um, why I am uh, associated with the denomination uh, that I am, even though it's a sort of a loose uh, association at the moment in some ways. So I'm going to uh, share a little bit. Um, there have been lots of movements over the centuries in Christianity ever since uh, uh, Jesus died on the cross and, and rose again. And uh, some of them have been good, some of them have been bad, some of them have been uh, sex, some of them have caused a lot of trouble. And uh, But by and large, when you get true Christianity, there's nothing better. Although people would dispute that if they're on the other side of the equation. So um, my wife and I go back to uh, in the 1970s when uh, we uh, were influenced by a movement called the uh, the Jesus movement, I guess. The, the one way movement uh, is what it was. They had a symbol of the finger pointing up in the air. Uh, or I think it was sort of, I don't know how it went like that somehow, a one-way movement, which people would consider a bit of a rude gesture these days, I, I guess. But um, anyway, we were um, influenced by that movement, and there were people uh, in it. Uh, a lot of the music was a big influence. Uh, at that time, um, the gospel music that was coming out of some of these churches, particularly in America at the time, were, were really quite good, and we still have some of that music here. And uh, so that was a big influence on us as well. But there were people who um, became Christians who were highly profiled people around about that time. Um, I think it was a bit before that time Cliff Richard became a Christian. Uh, Paul Stuckey of Peter, Paul and Mary became a Christian. Barry Maguire uh, of that famous protest song, The Eve of Destruction, became a Christian. So a lot of people were influenced by that movement, and we were too. And... Uh, so around about that time we were my wife was going to church i wasn't and uh, eventually i came to go to the same church and the church was a church of christ which is a, a denomination i guess which when it started out it didn't want to be a denomination it was just an organization that was trying to restore new testament christianity how it was in the bible because the founders of the churches of christ were disgusted with all the um, the things that were going on in the name of Christianity in the various denominations and churches and uh, some of them were really weird. I have a, an old family Bible here which has got a list of all the um, um, different denominations that were around particularly in America around about the uh, the time a couple of hundred years or more ago of the restoration movement is what it was called uh, got off the ground and if you looked at some of those you'd think was well, no wonder everyone was in confusion and and there was a lot of strife and um, some things that were happening weren't very Christian. So anyway, I'm going to share a little bit. I've probably rambled on a bit too much already of why I am associated with the churches simply known as Churches of Christ. Um, at the moment, we, my wife and I lead a congregation in a nursing home, which is, has an association with the Churches of Christ, but it's not actually a, uh, a constituted church if you like, but we, we conduct our meetings the same way as the Churches of Christ uh, do in, in their churches. And uh, we also attend another uh, normal uh, Churches of Christ um, uh, body <laughs> group in a church not far from where we live on a fortnightly basis because the other church is only on a fortnightly basis at the moment. So we've still got a connection. We're not formally members at the moment of churches of christ in in an actual location but we are by our baptism into christ 
And one of the main things that Churches of Christ always used to try and get across was and that we are not the only Christians, but Christians only. We don't want to be called anything other than a Christian. So I've got a little pamphlet here. Um, why I'm associated with, I don't know whether you can see that or not, yeah, with Churches of Christ. Uh, with the churches known simply as Churches of Christ. It's by someone, uh, one of the original ministers, and uh, his name was G.T. Fitzgerald. He was a minister in the Churches of Christ. I'll just read a little bit out of it, and I'll just, um, I'll just touch on the headings. Um, incidentally, the, one of the main founders of the, uh, before I start, of Churches of Christ was an American man and his son called Alexander Campbell and his son Thomas Campbell no sorry Thomas Campbell and, and his son Alexander Campbell and they uh, formed this group in America and in England and, and then eventually came to Australia and Scotland and everything this book is called I think you might better read it there The Christian System by Alexander Campbell and this is where a lot of the tenets of Churches of Christ uh, are written down although things have changed over the years as they do in all movements things change so I'm going to read a little bit about this. Um, this article is, and you may not be a Christian at all watching this, I'm just um, um, wondering if it will pique your curiosity. I'm going to put some links underneath to where you can read some of the articles written by the early people in Australia on Churches of Christ, some of their thoughts. Um, some of those thoughts might have changed a bit since then, but there'll be a link. It, it's a wonderful resource I'm going to put below down here in, in the text. So, here we are, a preliminary, I'm going to read a little bit of this, I'm not going to go too long on all this stuff. This article is not written as a criticism of other Christians. If the Christians now scattered throughout the various religious bodies are ever to fulfil the will of Jesus Christ and be united as prayed for by him, this is in John 17, 21 to 23, you can look that up, we must learn to understand each other better. Unkindly criticisms only widen the breach that separates us. None of us cares to be misunderstood. Hence, none of us should be content to misunderstand others. Try to understand your neighbour and you will be understood is a truth well worth considering. So some of the things why what he's written down, and I would probably endorse most of these, I think. The Churches of Christ is a changing movement. They don't have quite exactly the same ethos that they once had. Uh, I, just read the, I just read the headings. I probably should photocopy this one and put it, make it available as a PDF. I am associated with Churches of Christ known simply as Churches of Christ because they have no God but the Bible. The whole idea of Churches of Christ is to get back to the Bible and, and restore the restoration movement was to restore what the Bible was actually teaching us. Uh, what's number two here? Because they, where the scriptures do not clearly reveal the will of God, stand for liberty of conscious conscience sorry liberty of conscience um, one of their sayings was where the bible speaks we speak and where it doesn't speak we remain silent of course people don't stick to that do they uh, because they honor christ by wearing his name by for the church in other words a lot of churches have different names and I won't mention some of them, but they all call themselves something different. But Churches of Christ simply honour Christ by using his name as part of it. So we're either called uh, Churches of Christ or Christians. Uh, so that's, that's where that one comes from. And that just goes on to say, because they refuse to wear any name but Christ's name for the individual follower of Christ. In other words, I'm a Christian. Because they honour Christ as head of the church. That's quite clear when you get into the New Testament. Because they honour Christ by refusing to adopt any human-made creeds. No creed but Christ. Well, that's, that's fair enough. But I, I, absolutely, I actually find some of the creeds that have been written over the years quite helpful. And I would have very little um, problem with uh, some of the main major creeds that are around the world in, 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 in Christianity. Because they honour Christ by practising the baptism authorised by him and his... Okay, had a little bit of an interruption there. It was actually um, one of my friends in a nursing home who rang me by mistake. So there you go. Uh, I was talking about um, 
baptism, I think. Um, and, and I'm reading why I'm associated with the churches known simply as Churches of Christ. And it says here, because they honour Christ by practising the baptism authorised by him and his apostles, the immersion of penitent believers. Uh, the baptism authorised by Christ is shown by Paul to have been a burial, an immersion. See Romans 6, uh, 4 and Colossians 2, 12. And um, it goes on to say that, um, and, and I was um, christened, or some people would have called it baptism. I don't call it baptism anymore, uh, as a child. Um, but then later on, when I um, started learning about what the Bible actually teaches, getting back to what the Bible teaches, I found that, um, and, and all denominations agree with this, when you go into their historical documents and they're looking at, at this um, subject, all agree that the original baptism was by immersion, and uh, total immersion, and it was also um, required that you repent. If you read in Acts 2.38, it says, um, Repent and believe and be baptized, and you will receive forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So um, that's the basis that we have that baptism. Now, many churches don't practice that, of course. Many do, but many don't. And it's always been a controversial issue. But the whole idea of Churches of Christ was to let's get rid of controversy by going back to what the Bible teaches. And if you have a look at the um, uh, historical evidence and all the um, people who've written about this, you'll find that that was how it was done in the New Testament times. It was a very important part of it. Some people regard baptism as just a symbol of something happening and uh, something that's happening within your heart. And in many ways it is. But it's also much more than that. So baptism by immersion as a penit penitent believer, uh, a repentant believer, is a very big part of Churches of Christ, and I endorse that position. But once again, as I said at the start, just because we do that doesn't mean to say that we are the only Christians, but we want to be Christians only. Um, because they honour Christ's command to meet and break bread in remembrance of his death every first day of the week. Churches of Christ do have communion every Sunday, and uh, there is some uh, support for that in the New Testament. Uh, others might not read that there is. But uh, if you look, uh, Jesus instituted the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Supper or Communion or Eucharist. And he said, do this as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Well, that's what Paul was saying. And uh, Jesus also uh, at the Last Supper instituted this practice as well. And it's a very important part of our weekly church services whereby we are focused back on what Christianity is all about. It's all centred on Jesus himself. Because they teach the priesthood of all believers, of all Christians. And that's a bit controversial. Some uh, churches have uh, a hierarchy of um, different offices. And churches of Christ do have that to a certain extent as well. But... Um, in, in saying that we believe in the priesthood of all believers, there's, there's evidence, there's um, support for that in the scriptures, is that, um, for instance, I'm not an ordained, in inverted commas, Church of Christ minister. I am allowed as a, a lay preacher to speak in churches. I'm, a, I'm allowed to conduct communion services. And if someone wanted me to baptise them, I am authorised to baptise them. Um, even though in another church, there's no way I'd be allowed to do any of that. Um, other churches have got more stricter rules. So, because they teach the priesthood of all believers, that's why I'm, of all Christians, that's why I do what I do. I believe I'm exercising a ministry when I do all these things that you, you see on, on my um, channel, uh, and the Christian uh, talks and whatever, and uh, also when I work in the community, and I'm involved, as I said before, in, in various ways, as a Christian in the community, and I do a lot of lay preaching and have done so for some years now. Because they are in content to tell inquiring sinners just what the apostles told men of their day who were seeking salvation. I won't go into that, but uh, it's quite clear um, if you read the scriptures and search them diligently, what's involved in becoming a Christian um, and the things that they will um, 
from the book of Acts, it says we learn that the apostles required faith, repentance and baptism uh, in accordance with Christ's last command. And churches of Christ have no hesitation in using the same answers as those given by the apostles. Thus, men seeking the way of salvation are simply told to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to repent and humbly obey his commandments. And one of those commandments, of course, is, is uh, baptism. Because they plead for the unity of all God's people. And I agree with that. We should all be one. And we are all one. And um, what I've found over the years, um, even though at times I've been quite uh, black and white on some of the things I believe, I've had fellowship with lots of other Christians from other denominations and I find I am at one with them and they are part of the family of God and I'm happy to be with them and, and I'm sure they're happy to be, well I think they're happy to be with me. <laughs> um, and the last bit is because they plead for the restoration of the New Testament church as the right and only basis for lasting Christian unity. Well there you go, that's a noble ideal. And um, if we did all practice what um, the Bible actually preaches and we took the trouble to find out what it actually preaches and not argue with each other, we, put, we could be restored to, um, to unity. But even way back in the early days, of course, of Churches of Christ, there, there was um, uh, very little unity. It's, uh, lots of divisions soon came in where you've got um, human beings. You're going to have that. And uh, people don't always practice what they preach. Or believe what they preach and uh, and also they go off on other things that are more convenient to believe than what the Bible actually teaches so there you go that's a little bit I mean that's a bit of a, a ramble I guess but just a little bit of background as to why I believe what I believe and partly why I do what I do on my YouTube channel and my blogs so thanks for watching like if you like subscribe if you wish and I'll see you next time thanks for watching see ya